Greetings, everybody. It's your old pal Frank here, and happy Monday. Hope everyone had a great weekend. I know I definitely did, as I'm sure you've probably seen from my Instagram or my Facebook, if you follow me on those uh, social media pages. So this past weekend, folks, was, of course, Montreal Comic Con. And let me tell you, my body is paying for it. I am very sore this morning. My shoulders, my lower back, my legs, my feet. Oh, my God. Sore from head to toe. But it was worth it. Because not only was I at Comic-Con this weekend for leisure time for myself. No, no. I was actually working at the con this weekend. Specifically Thursday to help set up and Sunday evening to tear down. So this is my second year, as I like to say, a Comic-Con roadie. <laughs> uh, last year, I helped my good buddy Brad set up his, um, his booth. And this year, I helped a new friend, my new friend Andrew, from Ontario. He has a comic shop called Comic Wizard, and um, I helped him set up his booth. Now, his booth was a little bigger than my buddy Brad's from last year, so it was interesting to really see uh, his idea, his, you know, his structure, how he likes everything set up. And it was just fun being part of a team to set up and tear down, and um, yeah, it was really, really fun. Uh, I've already given my services for next year, so really excited already, and um, yeah, it was just a real, real fun time. This was actually my, I believe, seventh or eighth year going to Comic-Con, not consecutively, because even though I've been going since 2013, uh, 2019 or 2020, I believe, I didn't go. And then, of course, there was during the pandemic and everything. But uh, usually, yeah, almost every year, every July, I'm at Comic-Con. Never fails. Uh, and even though it's been five or six years now that I don't collect comic books per se anymore, uh, even though uh, I go to the con, I still like to, um, you know, pick up maybe a couple of uh, blank covers so I have them for future comic cons and if i decide to uh, get a sketch done or something i have one sketch cover left and uh, unfortunately i didn't get any sketches this year but that's okay um and again even though i don't really collect comics i still very much love my mad magazines i never got rid of those so that's why uh this year that was my main goal to hunt down some some older issues of Mad, and I did. I have a nice stack here that I'm going to show you in a bit. And I also found some cards, and I took part in some photo ops, because that's my new favorite thing. Um, instead of coming home with stacks and stacks of comic books, now I like coming home with nice 8x10s to put in my folder. <laughs> and... Um, my thing is, every year, once the uh, Comic-Con list is out, I like to pick one celeb to get a either a professional photo done with, or I'll go to their table and I'll take a selfie with them, which a lot of times I find is a lot better, because I feel when you get a selfie with the uh, actor or whatever at their table, it's a lot more intimate, and you actually have more time to talk with the actor, Whereas when you do one of these, it's like you walk in, hi, how are you? Look at the camera, click, okay, next, bye. That's it, you know? Unless the person you're getting a picture with really, let's say, likes what you're wearing, or if you bring a prop in or something, and they'll, they'll talk to you about it. But it's very, very quick, which I'm sure a lot of you know. I'm sure a lot of you have been to a Comic-Con before. So, um, yeah, so... This year, my photo op I did by myself, which was at the at their table, was of course Canadian icons, the Trailer Park Boys, and then uh, I jumped into two photo ops with my good friend Carly, 
and one of them, my cousin Julian, jumped in with us as well. And um, yeah, I'm going to show all this to you. And for those of you who are tired of the comic thing, don't worry, because after I show all this goodness to you, I do have another uh, hanger box here of Series 1. So we could go hunting maybe for a Matthew Nyes or a Luke Hughes Young Gun. Or maybe pull that Connor Bedard first draft pick card that everyone's still gaga over. Who knows? Anyway, so first things first, I'm the realist. No, I'm joking. Um, I found some cards. There was a few card uh, dealers there. Of course, it was all Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, uh, no hockey or whatever. But that's okay because uh, I am still building some Pokemon sets like the uh, Pokemon Go set from the uh, Sword and Shield block from 2022. And uh, I managed to pick up two cards that um, I've been looking for for a while, starting with this uh, Conkelder V. This is the other alt-art card in the set. Uh, the first one, of course, is the Mewtwo. I pulled that in a pack. Uh, I'll try and link the video down below to where I pulled that. So now I got the other alt art. And then, of course, the biggest card from the Pokemon Go set next to the Mewtwo uh, alt art is, of course, the Mewtwo V-Star gold card. Uh, I paid 20 for this, and the ones I've been eyeing on eBay were going for like around 30 So, yeah, I feel I, I did good on this one. There are two other gold cards in the Pokemon Go set I need. Luckily, they're not as expensive as the Mewtwo. So, yeah, I'm very thankful for that. Next, we have here a first day issue of the um, this Canadian stamp commemorating the uh, 72 Summit series done by this very talented man, Mr. Terry Mosier, a.k.a. Aislinn. And um, as you can see, he signed it for me. Uh, I've met Mr. Mr. Mosier a couple of times. And um, normally you would have had to pay for these, but he gave this to me because I, I reminded him of a little interaction we had years ago. Um, there was a little quaint little bookstore near my place, and he was doing... He was doing a... Um, an appearance there and it just so happened that when I showed up it was only me and him in the store so I went and sat in back with them I had a, I had a nice chat we were there for about half an hour just talking and of course him being a absolute uh, lover of the Montreal Expos so we were talking about that and we were just sipping Perrier it was great and because of bringing that up he grabbed one of these and he goes, you know, I, I, I remember that. And so he signed it for me and uh, I took a picture with them and it was just really, really fun. And again, even even getting this when I met, I was at his table and we were talking for a good maybe 15, 20 minutes. So yeah, really, really fun. Now pictures. So I'm going to turn the other one over. No, no, no peeking. <laughs> so this first one we have is, of course, myself, my friend Carly, my cousin Julian, and former WWE superstar, I'm trying to get this right, Elias. Yes, we did not walk with Elias on Saturday, but we stood with him. <laughs> so that was pretty neat. And then after this was done and when he went back to his table, um, my friend Carly, she she went back to his table with them and he signed a, a picture for her and everything. So really, really cool. But I, I, I just like the uh, the eight by tens. <laughs> I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do a video one day of all my Comic Con eight by ten photo ops that I've done in the past. There there's some real cool ones. Uh, okay, I'll just put this down here. Now, this second photo op I took part in, uh, I consider this probably bucket list right up there with when I met the Trailer Park Boys on Saturday. 
um, because you never know when's the next time you're going to meet someone. Anything could happen. And especially when it comes to meeting a Hollywood movie legend. Yes, I hopped into my friend Carly's photo op with horror icon and legendary actor, Mr. Robert Englund. Yes, this oh, stupid glare. This was really, really neat. So there we go. I could say I finally met Robert Englund. And a lot of people were telling me, you know, when I said I was jumping into her, her photo op, they were like, yes, do it. Because he is getting up there in age, and you never know when the next time you're going to meet him. I mean, just take George, George A. Romero, you know. My buddy Ryan, he got to meet him like eight months before he passed away. And uh, apparently a buddy of his didn't get a chance to meet him that year when my buddy Ryan met him. And he's like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll meet him at the next Comic-Con or something. And boom, eight months later, he, he passed away. So, yeah. You never know. You never know. So it's good to take advantage. All right. Now, Mad Magazines. So we kick things off with issue number 107 here from December 1966. I just love some of these plain covers they did. Wanted new reader with a revolting sense of humor. No intelligence necessary. Apply within. <laughs> Then we got issue 113 from September 1967. And as you probably noticed, I like going for the cheaper stuff. This was five bucks. But because this was from the booth that I helped set up, it wasn't five bucks. It was actually cheaper. And what I like about uh, Andrew is he'll put on the back. If I could get it here. See? Back cover bent. So obviously someone did the fold in, but at least he would mark that on the back of the, uh, the, the magazine board. So you don't find out about that later if, if it's a detached cover or something. I love vendors who, who do that. Uh, we got issue 115 from December 67. We don't try very hard. <laughs> Classic. Mad issue right here from April 69. Who needs you? <laughs> Old Uncle Sam there. Issue 128 from July 69. So when Neil Armstrong stepped foot on the moon, this was the Mad Magazine on, uh, on sale at the time. And this one too. Cover nearly detached, but that's okay. I'm still going to read them, and then they're going to go in my short box. Then we got issue 151 from June 1972. Uh, proudly salutes American industry and its endless quest for quality. Ah, I get it, I get it. It's all off-center. So, proudly salutes American industry and its endless quest for quality, perfection, and high standards of production. Yeah. Hey, uh, upper deck, upper deck. Uh, pay attention to the to the June seventy two issue of Mad Magazine. <laughs> oh my God! There's another classic uh, Mad cover from December seventy eight, the Mad Star Wars special, musical special, whatever. So there we go. Exclusive scientists released first computer written joke. <laughs> so there we go. Another classic from June 84 of The Right Stuff featuring <laughs> the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> oh, this never gets old, I tell you. There's another classic Mad issue, or cover, I should say, from March 88, spoofing Michael Jackson's bad album cover. So there we go. And then... I saw this in the bin, and I was like, for 18 bucks, yeah. Marvel Super Special Magazine, The Empire Strikes Back, and uh, there's a small, small tear near the staple, but I don't care, because 
first cameo appearance of Palpatine, uh, IG-88, first appearance of Yoda, Boba Fett, Lando, and Lobot. So, first appearance of Yoda, baby. That's, uh, that's, that's a nice, nice book to have in any collection. And again, for 18 bucks, yeah, that's a steal. So, there you go. That's my Comic-Con haul. But, as I said, we're not done yet because we are, if I could get Buck out here. We are going to rip into a hanger box of Series 1. Okay. So, last Monday, I ripped into two of these. And I pulled one young gun out of two boxes. But it was a pretty decent young gun because it was a uh, Yaroslav uh, Askarov uh, young young goalie for uh, Nashville. So that was pretty nice. But let's see what we can pull today. And yes, I will read off all the cards since it's only one pack. So we got Cole Perfetti. Shout out to CR Toppy. That's his boy. Uh, we got Jordan Eberle, Adam Fox, Dylan Cousins, rocking the uh, the Bullhead Buffalo Sabres jerseys. I love those jerseys. Also, shout out to Bills Mafia. Elias Pettersson, shout out to Maiden. I know he's a big uh, EP40 fan. Also, Maiden, if you need that for your uh, Super Collector set, let me know. I know you're looking for uh, Pedersen cards. Uh, we got Seth Jones, Jacob Slavin, rocking the, rocking the whale there. Love those Carolina uh, reverse retro jerseys. We got Evan Bouchard, Lucas Dostal. Cody Glass, and now we come to our inserts. So we got a Devin Levy, Opeachy, uh, Bronze Parallel, Glossy. We got a Matt Boldy, Star Surge. Sebastian Ajo, um, Teacher's Pet, so shout out to uh, Vogs, way, uh, W Vogs, 18. He's a big Carolina fan, and no young gun in this pack. Oh, well. We got Mikhail Granlund, Nick Jensen, Jesper Boakvist, Brock Besser, Adam Boakvist, Nick Letty, Uka Pekka Lukanen, Valerie Nachushkin, the Breadman Artemi Panarin, Joe Valeno, and we finish this pack with a Nick Paul. So there we go. Of course, since this is Series 1, I'm hanging on to all the base for when I finally get my binder sometime. And actually, you know what, folks? That wasn't the last thing because for helping tear down my buddy Andrew's um, um, booth last night, there was one other thing he kind of gifted to me. Well, he, he gave me a hell of a discount on it, so um, I couldn't pass it up. I still got to figure out where the heck I'm going to put it. As you know, I like Funko Pops, but this thing... Hold on. <laughs> you know, like they would say in Reboot, incoming game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, incoming Funko Pop. Yeah, it's um, big, very big. That, my friends, is the 10-inch PX exclusive Blacklight uh, <laughs> Galactus with Silver Surfer. Yeah, <laughs> but it is friggin' awesome, and... And again, I was like, I, I could not pass this thing up. It is just too 
friggin' cool, man. So, yeah. And trust me, I got looks on the Metro last night carrying this thing under my arm. <laughs> They're like, what the hell is that? But, uh, yeah. Very, very cool. So, okay, now. The video is at an end. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this uh, haul slash rip. Uh, if you did, you know the routine. Uh, drop a like if you liked it. Drop on down into the comments below. And let me know what were some of your favorite parts of this haul slash rip. Also, uh, let me know how your weekend went. Let me know if you got anything planned for this week. Uh, cause you know, always looking for stuff to watch when I'm at work and whatnot. And, um, then of course, uh, check out the description of this video because there are always links down there to channels either mentioned in my videos or not mentioned, but just channels that I find cool and need some spotlight shown on them. So uh, in doing so, if you check them out and if it's your first time, make sure to like their videos, leave them some positive feedback, and of course, subscribe to their channels. And of course, when leaving my channel, if you'd like to, you don't have to if you don't want to, but if you would like to, be my guest and click that subscribe button as well, and click the little bell notification next to it so it lets you know when my videos go live. Alrighty, so that's it for me, folks. Hope you guys have a great remaining Monday. Hope you guys have an awesome week. Uh, depending where you are in the world, if it's a little hotter than usual, uh, try and find ways to stay cool. Drink lots of water. <laughs> Just turned into a health guru there for a second. And um, then I'll see you back here on Friday for everyone's favorite show of the week, The Friday Recap. So till then, folks, I say to all of you out there watching, laters!